We know that components in Webflow are reusable layouts that keep not just style and structure consistent, but content too. Some components, like navbars and footers, are meant to have identical content everywhere. But what if you want different content in each instance while keeping the layout the same? Two words, component properties. But what even are properties? Component properties let you change content or settings on an instance of a component while keeping it linked to the rest of them. So with carts, for example, it's common to use the same structural layout for multiple elements while replacing things like content on different instances. And when you make changes to the main component, it'll still apply to instances where you've set properties. This is super useful for keeping your designs flexible and updating just the parts that matter. It saves time for you and your team, keeps things consistent, and makes your design systems more scalable. We're going to cover component properties in four parts. Creating properties, changing content, organizing properties, and finally, disconnecting and deleting properties. First part, creating the property. Here's a section with a card component inside. Let's duplicate it so we have two. But I don't want the second one saying the same thing. Specifically, I want to change the image, the heading, and the paragraph. So on any instance of our card component, let's double click to edit it. And with the image element selected, let's head over to the element settings panel. We'll go down to add a property on the image, but we need to create one first. So again, we're editing the component. The image is selected and we're going to create a property. And we can name the property whatever we want. And we can even set a default image for this property, but we'll keep it as is for now. And just like that, we created a property for overriding this image on any instance of the component. Let's do the same thing to the heading. With the heading selected in element settings, we'll add a property on the text, what this heading says. We can give the property a name, it's fine as is for now, and we can even give it some default text to something generic like card heading, but we can always change this later. Then create, heading property created. And at any time, we can see a high level overview of all the properties by selecting the card element. This is the parent most element while we're still editing the component. And head over to the properties panel. So far, we've created properties to edit the image and edit the heading but we still need to create one more, a property to edit the paragraph. We can do that here from the properties panel. We'll add a property for text. We can name it paragraph, and we can set the default text for this as well, which I conveniently have copied onto my clipboard, so I'll just paste it with my mug. Okay, are we done? No, when it comes to creating properties from the properties panel, we need to connect it to an element. So let's do that. I'll select the paragraph, and over here, over in element settings, I'll connect that text to the property I just created, the paragraph one. If we escape out of the card component, we can see the outlines that indicate that we have properties set on these elements. Now are we done? Well, we mentioned earlier, you can create a property for settings. As an example, you can toggle if something is visible or not. Let's do that real quick on this button. Let's create a property on the visibility. We'll call it button visibility and create. So we didn't just create one property or two properties or three or five or 20, we created four properties. Now let's change content. With the component selected, I can access the properties panel and start changing the content. I can replace this image to anything from our assets panel. Let's do it again. On the card heading, we can type whatever we want. I can even change content directly on the canvas. Double click and edit. And as I'm changing the content here, we can see it's not affecting the other card component instance. And that's because we're changing content and settings using the properties we added to those elements within the component. So let's try again in another component. Let's go over to components and we'll drag in another card next to these. So it's now a three card design. And the content in this one matches the first one. That's because it's inheriting the default content. But same thing here we can change the content on this component specifically as well. That's changing content on a component property. Let's organize our properties. We'll make a specific group for the component properties that involve content. Back in the component, over in the properties panel, we can edit a property settings by clicking on it. We don't have any groups, so I'll just type card content and hit return. And just like that, we created a group and the property was grouped in it. To group the rest, same thing, edit the property, click the dropdown and select the group. We can even reorder them if we want. 
Good organization and clear labeling for your components are crucial for setting your other team members up for success. For example, marketers building their own pages can easily understand what properties they're using so they can edit with confidence. So keep that in mind as you label, organize, and reorder your properties. That was grouping. Lastly, let's talk about disconnecting and deleting properties. You can disconnect a property from an element by going in the dropdown and disconnect. What that does is it removes the property on this element in the component. You'll notice that the other components went back to the default image since we removed the property. Now, if we click on the car component and head back to the properties panel, we can still see that property we disconnected earlier. That's because we disconnected it. We didn't delete it. To delete, hover over and delete. You can also just delete properties, which will automatically disconnect the property. However, this is extremely destructive. Deleting the property will also delete the edited content everywhere else, except we can just undo. But when you have multiple people working with these components, it's important to consider the content they've edited on other instances of this component. So keep that in mind when you're disconnecting and deleting. And that's it. We covered a lot. So let's quickly recap. We created not 10, but four properties. We edited the content of these properties. We organized our properties. And finally, we disconnected and deleted properties. This just scratches the surface when it comes to using component properties. And there's so much more to components, like connecting properties to dynamic content. So don't forget to check out Webflow University and the Help Center to learn more. But that's component properties in Webflow. I'm Grimur, and I approve this message.